Bay Farm has everything you'd expect from a farming life sim game and more. The story goes like this. You find a message in a bottle on the beach, you open it up and you read it. It's a note asking for help, so you build a raft and you set sail. But unfortunately you get sucked into a whirlpool on the way, and you get shipwrecked on an island called Azoria. However, don't be worried, this is actually where the message in a bottle came from and you've made it to your destination. The people of the island are grateful that you're here and that you're here to help figure out the weird magic mystery that's making living on the island so difficult and dangerous. Of course, before you start playing, you're going to have to make your character. The character creation <laughs> is pretty standard. You get to change your facial features, hair, uh, colors of all of these things, your body type, as well as your voice. Once you're in, your first task, of course, is to clear your new farm. The first few days are filled with lots and lots of quests to teach you what you can do from, of course, farming. animal husbandry, <laughs> fishing, <laughs> crafting, mining, and combat. Um, in addition to this, you'll be tasked with making new friends and given the option to maybe do a little flirting as well. Now, this game has so much in it, I have not explored probably even half of what is available to me, but I wanted to give you my regular first looks review. The biggest thing I would say is a difference is how I feel like this game is a little bit more focused on the adventure and the exploration than it is on the farming and relationship building. I think the thing that kind of points this out more than anything else is the fact that it's split up into chapters. So I finished the first and I believe the second chapter. And I think that makes me feel like I am actually progressing forward and that the game is telling me that I'm progressing forward. While there is obviously end game things in games like Stardew, which I will probably go back to for reference a lot because it's the other uh, farm game that I've played the most. There's obvious progression there, but I feel like splitting it up into chapters makes it feel like I've accomplished something a little bit more. Another thing that I think really fulfills this exploration focus is the, um, the multitude of biomes and the different types of danger that are within them. Um, again, I haven't seen everything yet, but the ones that I want to point out are the mines, which is the like normal, there's combat down there as well as the mining. But then there's another one that I stepped into for just a second because I began freezing. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to go back to that. The game does have main quests and side quests, kind of the same way Stardew Valley does with the quests that kind of sit in your inventory versus the ones that you get from the bulletin board and the message board. 
I do feel like the main quests, at least at this point, have been pushing me towards certain story aspects that may change as we go on, but for now I do feel like that's a little bit different from the uh, from the main quests where it's like, get me a thing, the same way that the bulletin board quests are like, get me a thing. <laughs> um, so, so far that again plays into that more adventure focused thing and story focused thing. One thing that I would, for lack of a better word, complain about is the way that friendship works. And it's not so much the way friendship works, but rather that not every NPC is friendshipable. Um, and I understand not everybody being romanceable, that makes sense to me, you know, people who aren't interested in romance or already have a partner or whatever it may be. But not being able to easily tell who I'm wasting my time talking to because I can't be friends with them um, is a little frustrating. Kind of adjacent to this is the gift mechanic, which I haven't actually gifted anyone anything yet. And that's because the mechanic's a little bit different. Um, the way in Stardew everybody has, you know, liked and hated and loved gifts. Rather than that, each of the characters that you can gift things to has a gift that they're looking for right now. Now, the problem with that is if you don't have it on you, you're not able to give them a gift. And... The gift changes. It's not the same gift every day. Um, I didn't quite pinpoint how often it changes, um, but it changes. <laughs> so you might be looking to get a brown snail uh, for, uh, for someone. And then you finally have this brown snail, you go to gift it to them and they're actually looking for shell bits now. Um, so that's something to kind of keep an eye on. It does keep it more interesting, and I do think that it seems a little more thoughtful and meaningful when you are gifting an NPC something, because it kind of plays into, like, you were listening to them and they happened to mention offhand that they really needed this thing and you've brought it to them. Um, so I think narratively that's actually a really cool thing. Uh, so crafting is a really interesting thing here. Crafting is crafting it's not that much different what i think is interesting is one um, crafting inside your house and outside of your house are different so you can craft things that belong outside uh, while you're outside but you can't craft things that belong inside while you're outside the other really cool thing that i think um, is a little bit different is that some of the decor within your house actually holds a mechanical benefit uh, your house has what's called like a coziness number and so you can add things to the inside of your house that will um, add to that coziness and specifically add to particular parts of coziness. So this means that if you have a bunch of heart cozy things in your, uh, in your house, you will have a higher health number the next morning. Um, and I just think taking decor and making it mechanic is cool. I'm sure it's not the first game to do it, but I really like it. So like I said, I haven't played nearly enough of this game. The things that I am most excited to explore are those areas that I can't get to yet. So I talked about the like mountainous area that's cold. Um, and then there's like a lava wall that I can't get behind yet, as well as uh, opening up a bit more of the spooky woods. I think having these biomes have such a different climate really adds to that exploration adventure theme that this game seems to have um, as compared to other games. So I will definitely have to brew some tea so that I can go up into the mountains. Uh, I'm excited to learn a bit more magic and maybe figure out how to get rid of those shadowy clouds on the ground and explore more of those areas. As well as, of course, reach the bottom of the mines and see what kind of dangers and mysteries lurk beneath. Keep your eyes peeled for more updates as I continue to play through. Um, and please go check the game out for yourself, you'll find the link below. If you want to join me and watch me play some games live, please go check me out over on Twitch for those live streams. I am Chickadee93 over there, and I hope you guys had fun. I had a blast. Catch you next time. Bye. 
hey, thanks for checking out Chicken D&D. If you liked what you saw, click all the buttons down below. Subscribe, like, comment. You know the drill. Thank you again so much. See you next time. Bye.